Hey everybody, how's it going? I am your host Adrian, coming to you almost live from lovely Petaluma, California, here in Studio MC2 at Quicksurf Internet Studios. The Geekinator is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Do feel free to head on over to techpodcast.com and check out all the other technology-related shows over there as well. I'd like to encourage everybody to visit us online over at quicksurf.com. Please do subscribe to the show if you have not already done so. And uh, for those of you who are just now discovering the show, uh, welcome and uh, please do subscribe. For those of you who, ha- who are longtime subscribers or you subscribed a while back, thank you for subscribing. Uh, you can find us online at our website, quicksurf.com, and I have a subscription links uh, for uh, an Og Vorbis, an MP3, and a video feed. You can also subscribe over at youtube.com, uh, blip.tv, Daily Motion. You can catch us on Stitcher Radio over at stitcher.com and at tunein.com. So got a nice selection of uh, online presences for you to uh, follow. With that, let's go ahead and get into the cool stuff I found for this episode. Uh, there's some pretty neat things I want to talk about. Before we get into anything, I went to see Star Trek Into Darkness. O-M-G. Awesome movie. Uh, beautiful cinematography. Gorgeous cinematography. And uh, just great movie all around. <sighs> wonderful, wonderful. So anyway, uh, (laughs) speaking of movies, over at The Verge, uh, theater owners reportedly pushing for shorter movie trailers to improve audience experience. Now, this is something that I would, I love watching movie trailers, but all too often, I, more often than not, I've seen the movie trailers online and then when I go to see a movie in the movie theater, I see the same movie trailers. Even worse, a new movie trailer will be released online, and it, I'm seeing the old trailer in the theater. Maybe it's just me. Maybe movie uh, studios haven't figured out that people watch movie trailers online. And so, you know, if you're going to show a movie trailer in the theater and make it enjoy, I'm more often than not, I'm bored. I'm not interested in seeing movie trailers in the movie theater because I've already seen most of them, or I'm not interested, you know, I've already seen that a movie trailer was released for a particular movie and I wasn't interested in watching the trailer to begin with and didn't really, you know, did all my research and already knew what the movie was kind of about and whether or not I was interested in it and either just didn't go see the movie trailer uh, online, meaning when I see it in the theater, I'm like, uh, I don't want to see it a or B I've already seen it and I'm bored. So, if, you know, I would love to see movie studios have movie trailers in the movie theaters that are exclusive to the movie theater and you can't find it online, make it more enjoyable. Anyway, uh, that's just my personal pet peeve. I mean, like I said, I went to see Star Trek the other day, and quite frankly, I sat through uh, close to 20 minutes of movies. Every single one I had already seen, and there had either been a new movie release or a new movie trailer released online, and I was seeing the old one, or it was a movie trailer that I'd just already seen, or I just wasn't interested in seeing. Um, 20 minutes. I mean, they literally, you know, movie trailers are typically like two and a half minutes long, according to this article. And that sounds about right. They limit that try to limit them to two and a half minutes, you know, at two and a half minutes. If you show five movie trailers, that's nearly 15 minutes, you know, and particularly like a blockbuster, like star Trek into darkness, you know, they're going to jam a uh, movie trailer. Same thing for, uh, Iron Man 3, when I went to see Iron Man 3, it, I literally sat through 20 minutes of movie trailers. It's ridiculous. Anyway, so what they're trying to do is limit movie trailer lengths to two minutes, and you cannot run a movie trailer or have any movie posters or any of that other stuff without a release date uh, embedded in the marketing material. So, in other words, you know, you shouldn't be releasing a movie trailer for a movie unless you know when, unless you have a release date. 
no more than four months ahead of when the movie's actually going to be released. That's a long time. You know, I mean, that four months. Yikes. Uh, from Gizmodo, building this, build this tiny drum machine and rock out like it's 1984. So uh, I thought this was pretty neat. Um, basically, it's a tiny little drum machine. It's about Arduino sized. Musicians still use them. This is pretty cool. You know, this is t literally a DIY type thing. So definitely uh, give it a check, especially if you are a musician. From coolest, it, it may also just be a really neat project to do. From coolestgadgets.com, Western Digital and SanDisk work together on solid state hybrid drives. That's right. When it comes to storage space on your computer, a couple of names would definitely stand out. For the larger capacity hard drives, you would probably have one form of Western Digital prod products lying around. You got that right. I've got, uh, let's see here. You can't really see it. You've been able to see it in the past, but I've got two hard drives, two WD external hard drives right there. You're looking at three terabytes of storage. Yeah, right there where my finger is. Yeah, three terabytes of storage right there. One is a two terabyte hard drive. The other one's a one terabyte hard drive. Uh, I've got right here, can't see it off screen, but it's my backup from my home server, which you can kind of see right here. Um, that hard drive is also a Western Digital hard drive. It's three terabytes. So, um, yeah, I've got uh, quite a few Western Digital. That's That doesn't even count the seven some odd, seven or eight terabytes I have in the home server that are all Western Digital or Seagate hard drives. Um, I prefer Seagates because they come with, at least they used to come with a five-year warranty, but uh, uh, there I've got a number of uh, Western Digital green hard drives in there. You know, people always go, oh, I don't want the green hard drives. Well, I like them because they're still fast enough to keep up with streaming movies and video across, you know, my network. So, you know, I, the way I view it is as long as I can sustain that, that's really all I care about. You know, I don't have to have screaming performance for copying gigantic files on and off of there. Is I just need to be able to stream stuff on and off there faster than I can watch it. So anyway, this is pretty neat. So they're basically, Western Digital and SanDisk are partnering together to make uh, a hybrid drive that's got some SSD cache to it and rotating media. So you get the giant capacity and you get like 24 gigs or 64 gigs of SSD uh, tacked onto it. So for all your more frequently accessed stuff gets uh, cached onto the SSD, the flash partition, so your access is significantly faster for those types of operations. So I thought this was pretty awesome. Um, you know, definitely give it a check and uh, let me know when it comes becomes available anyway. From Mashable, PC Outlook drops as tablet demand grows. Uh, this is kind of a commentary. You know, you're preaching to the choir here. I have gone from, over the last 10 years, several computers down to one, two, three computers, physical computers, uh, two of which only receive any kind of regular use. One kind of receives some use and multiple iPhone, smartphone type tablet and tablets uh, that have replaced all the other computers simply because those computers used to be used for um, basically surfing the internet, doing email, you know, that sort of thing. And now, uh, you know, you can do the same thing with a tablet. So, you know, a lot of that computer usage has been replaced and uh, with, you know, either a smartphone or a tablet for that functionality. And I've really only, you know, basically I've got the home server, which is kind of the, the truck in Apple parlance where Steve Jobs said, you're going to have, you know, still have PCs, but they're going to take on more of the truck role where, you know, you need a utility type thing for doing heavy lifting and that sort of thing. Uh, so I've got a truck here. It's a storage truck basically. And then uh, the other computer parked right here, which you can't see is a MacBook Pro, a relatively recent MacBook Pro. That's my processing truck. 
So processor wise, the server is not a lot. It's just got a pile of storage in it, mainly because I, you know, have a lot of uh, pictures and music and TV shows and movies and that sort of thing that I stream around in the house. And, uh, you know, my MacBook Pro is the processor for doing all of my heavy processing intensive stuff. There's not a lot of storage there. It's only got a terabyte on it. But, uh, you know, it's it's basically its sole purpose is to is to, uh, you know, process video and do, you know, picture editing and anything heavy lifting that isn't real easy to do on a tablet uh, or you can do it on a tablet, just not as high quality. That's what the MacBook Pro does. And it's portable enough. I can take it with me. So this, you know, I, I've been making this transition personally uh, with real earnest over the last couple of years. Um, since tablets have kind of come in vogue and apparently a lot of people are because PC shipments are down dramatically from blog.makezine.com, a raspberry Pi controlled remote pleasant presence platform. I thought this was pretty awesome. Uh, they have a video up. It's a, uh, you can control up to 16 servers four AC relays and a webcam via a web browser. And it's all controlled with the help of Space Brew Interactive Software. Excuse me. Um, pretty interesting. They've got some, uh, th like I said, they've got a video up and they've got a picture of what this thing is. You can twirl it, the webcam around. Pretty neat. Um, gosh, I'd love to see. I'd love to get one of these, actually. This is pretty awesome. So anyway, uh, pretty nice way to do some remote presence type it's not quite like a robot that rolls around that you can talk through and that sort of thing but it's it's more of a remote presence type thing um all controlled by raspberry pi even better over at slash gear uh you know apple's worldwide developers conference is uh right around the corner it's a couple weeks away the rumor mill is starting to spool up uh the iphone 5s is rumored to have a retina 2 display that's right. Uh, the Retina 2 display will be uh, 1,704 pixels by 960 pixels. So it's it'll be, uh, you know, still have the 16 by 9 aspect ratio. Not quite a 1080 display. I'd love to see them make a 1080 display because that's pretty much doubling um, the display of the iPhone 4, 4S and and. Uh, I think the iPhone 5 is a slightly higher. Well, it is a slightly higher because it's a 16 by 9 display but uh this if i remember correctly is 960 by 540 if they could double it then it'd be 10 1920 by 1080 so you'd basically have a standard hd display uh on the 5s or the 6 or whatever they end up calling it but uh anyway another thing uh new ipad models are supposedly coming out one of which will be the ipad maxi that's right uh the iPad Maxi will be uh, essentially a much larger uh, iPad, uh, right around the 12-inch uh, display size mark, which is kind of interesting. Um, you know, a couple of other things. Uh, yeah, 12.9 inches. A uh, couple of other things, uh, you know, maybe shrinking down the uh, iPhone's bezel a little bit. Uh, you know, I mean, there's quite a few a new iOS. So I'm curious to see uh, what comes of it. Um, I'd love to see something, you know, Apple just come out with some really awesome stuff that kind of just casts all doubts aside about whether or not they've, they're still a hit maker or not. Only time will tell. Over at Mashable.com, there's a time-lapse video on YouTube. I'll have it linked up in the show notes. You can find those online over at Quicksurf.com that shows nine months of Curiosity Mars missions photos in one minute. So basically, it's effectively a time-lapse video of where the, the guy who made this video took all of the photos that Curiosity has taken over a nine-month period assembled them all into this really awesome one minute time lapse uh uh time lapse uh video it's pretty sweet you definitely need to check this out like i said it's, i'll have it linked up in the show notes so you can go check it out if you want to 
over at Gizmodo. This is NASA's solar propulsion engine of the future. It looks kind of like a Tron blue ringy thing. Uh, it's a glowing blue ring. It's not a designer lamp. It's NASA's cutting edge solar electric propulsion thruster. It's being tested at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory. It's using xenon ions to create its thrust. The engine is being considered for use as part of the asteroid initiative, which is NASA's plan to capture a small asteroid and redirect it safely to an orbit around Earth. The engine is a radically updated and redesigned version of one that's currently powering NASA's Dawn mission as it heads toward the asteroid belt. So I'm looking at this. This is pretty neat. Um, I wonder how much thrust it makes. I need to look into this a little more, but uh, pretty interesting nonetheless. That'll do it for this edition of the Geekinator. As always, everything we've talked about is linked up in the show notes, which you can find online over at quicksurf.com. Please do subscribe to the show if you haven't already done so. And uh, with that, I will see all of you on the next episode. I'll see you then. Bye.